Welcome into Minnesota Vikings Now. I am Tom Downey. Here's what's on tap for today's show. Could the Vikings pursue drafting Anthony Richardson in round one? We'll break that down. The possible extension of tight end TJ Hawkinson and some Brian Flores press conference reactions as well. We are eight subs away from 11,000 subscribers here. And we have you covered with all the latest Vikings news and rumors and draft and free agency and trades and everything else in between there so subscribe if you want free vikings videos if we don't get to 11,000 subscribers by today we're going to delete the channel hit that sub button right now let's get into the anthony richardson conversation could the vikings pursue a quarterback like richardson if he falls to them in round one of the nfl draft kind of kick-started by albert breer of Sports Illustrated. He says, I think Kirk Cousins will be the Vikings quarterback in 2023, and I think certainly they consider doing another one-year extension with him this offseason. But I also believe that Cousins' age, he'll be 35 come week one, and contract situation should make the Vikings a quiet contender to take a quarterback in April. Let's look and we'll spend some time here on some of the pros and cons of who Kirk Cousins is. We know he's in that top 15, maybe borderline top 10 range among quarterbacks, and that is valuable because the uncertainty of not having a Kirk Cousins means you could be shuffling through the likes of, you know, Sam Howe, Carson Wentz for years, like the Commanders have. You can look at what the Vikings have done since they landed Kirk Cousins and what the Jets and Commanders, then Redskins, have had at quarterback. And both those teams be like, yeah, we would have loved Kirk Cousins compared to what we've had right now. You put Kirk Cousins in the Jets, they're a playoff team. That's valuable for that franchise. He's very, pretty much never heard. He's been steady and consistent from that standpoint. But there are cons here. He's... You know, the big game performance is primetime Kirk Cousins has been a conversation because, well, he hasn't always delivered. Although well, he played great against the Giants, it was the defense's fault they lost that game. He is a good but not great quarterback, and there is limitations from his overall playmaking. I think you saw it in that Giants game. As good as he was, there wasn't much uh, impact play out of the pocket in terms of mobility, etc. And he did the check down throw, which... Couldn't have it there. Got to just be aggressive because you're not going to get the first down there. Cousins is limited in terms of is he ever going to be a top five quarterback? Not at this point in his career. We know what Kirk Cousins is. And that's a good quarterback. That's valuable for a team in Minnesota's shoes right now where they just won the division. You're not really going to move on from that quarterback at that point. But... In the event someone does slide to you, it does start to make some sense to at least consider it. So more on particularly Anthony Richardson in terms of this conversation, but how far can Kirk Cousins take you in the playoffs? Can you get to the Super Bowl? Are you going to be stuck being a divisional uh, round team, each an NFC championship game? Go vote at the pinned comments of today's show. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Let me know. So now let's focus in on, in particular, Anthony Richardson. Because look, CJ Stroud's not going to be there. Bryce Young's not going to be there. I doubt Will Levis is there, but he falls in the same category of an Anthony Richardson. I do want to get to this point from Max Chadwick, who says, Richardson's physical tools aren't just the best among all quarterbacks in his class. They're arguably the best since Cam Newton. So I think the problem you're running into here is that we're defining tools as speed and arm strength and ignoring everything else and also pretending guys like uh can't Ant andrew luck didn't happen and you know other diamond players like trevor lawrence didn't happen that I, I can't get on board with that richardson does have fantastic tools he does he's got a cannon for an arm he's got great mobility and there are flashes of, of really good ball placement of, of pocket manipulation and mobility etc and he's got the really good dynamic ability on the ground he's, he's a very big player and very fast for his size if you're betting on the pure upside, I would rather have Anthony Richardson than Will Levis. But he couldn't complete 54% of his passes at Florida. That's not good. There's massive boom or bust, terrifying downside here with Richardson, who could end up being a, I don't know, I mean, Pax Lynch was the first-round pick, and he flamed on the NFL. That's the kind of downside you're facing here if you add someone like Richardson, and it doesn't work out. Now, Minnesota, I think, would be a pretty decent landing spot purely for the player, not talking so much about the 
team aspect of the year. Got great young playmakers. Justin Jefferson can sit and learn for at least a year behind Kirk Cousins. You have the young offensive head coach in Kevin O'Connell. And at some point, you do want to gamble a little bit there. But Richardson, if he gets to you, I, I'm a bit more on board with that than saying number six overall, potentially. So there's a lot of pros and cons there. The upside's really intriguing, but there are some significant jumps he still has to take to actually get to that level, and that is what makes it so terrifying. So do you want to draft? So let's say he's there, round one. Do you want to take him? D for draft, P for pass. Let's also talk now. I think we'll be a bit more on board at this one unanimously. Extending TJ Hawkinson per Darren Wolfson. Vikings have quote unquote clear interest in extending Hawkinson. He's set to earn just under $9.4 million this year on his fifth year option. And I think the absolute bottom tier floor is the 13.68 that David and Joku got in 2022. And I think you're going to be pushing for even more than that, at least more guaranteed money than what David and Joku got from Cleveland Browns because Hawkinson is better at football. I, there's really no way around it as far as I'm So this is an almost 1,000-yard tight end. If you're ranking the best tight ends in the NFL in some order, you're doing what? You're doing Travis Kelsey, doing George Kittle, and then you're probably having a discussion of, okay, is, is Hawkinson here? Is he third on that list? Like, Dallas Goddard there? Is Darren Waller going to be healthy for you? Hawkinson is a fantastic playmaking tight end. Absolute steal of a trade involved with the Detroit Lions. Thanks again, Detroit, for making that happen. I think if you're doing a heavily guaranteed deal, which helps allow you to keep the average per year down a little bit more, I think something like four years, $55.5 million, almost $14 million per year, would be feasible for the Vikings and for Hawkinson. Gets him a lot of guaranteed money up front, big-time contract, makes him among the highest-paid tight ends in the NFL. I could see Hawkinson trying to be a bit aggressive of, like, I'm the highest-paid tight end. I could see it, but if you do it a year early – you benefit from that, and it does keep the player gets paid now with more guaranteed money, and it sets you up to be able to better manipulate the salary cap and the books from that standpoint. So would you offer this deal? Why for yes and for no? I'm willing to go probably a million dollars per year more than that standpoint. I think it, it makes it a, a situation where you can have success there. Darren Waller gets $17 million per year. It's a little bit of a deceptive contract, but at that point you're pushing easy top five tight end money. I wouldn't be shocked if you wanted 14.9. In the end, much like Justin Jefferson, I don't really care. I'm going to get it done because he's an awesome football player and I want to have those guys on my team around for a long time. Speaking of Jefferson, Vikings jerseys are on sale. Chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey. Links in the comments section and the description. Whoever you're a fan of or a player you're the biggest fan of, go get their jersey today. Jefferson, perfect one because you know he's going to be here for a long time. Or a throwback one like maybe a Randy Moss jersey. Links in the comments section and the description. Chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey. These are official Nike jerseys from our friends over at Fanatics. So don't delay. Go get yours today. Before we go, some takeaways from the Brian Flores press conference, the new Vikings defensive coordinator. Still a great hire, by the way. Here's what he had to say on his defensive philosophy. I like to be aggressive. Again, not reckless. There's a method to the madness. There's a rhyme and a reason, whether it's down and distance, field goal position, etc., I look forward to some aggression. Uh, I think that would be a nice boost to a Vikings defense that clearly needed some changes from that standpoint. They were 30th in points per game, 31st in yards per game, 30th in yards per play. So it wasn't just a volume thing. It was bad efficiency as well. They were almost bottom 10 in rushing yards, second to last in passing yards per game. That Vikings defense was not good enough. That's why Ed Donatel got the boot. And I'm excited about Brian Flores, who likes to play a lot of cover zero, cover one man, and put his corners on an island and try to get home with pass rush, which would put big pressure on a couple different players. And I'm hopeful, of course, that the young second year players have a significant breakout season. Lewis Seen was banged up, much like Andrew Booth was. Your first two picks. Seen is primed to take over as a safety. I think when you're doing some cover 
one-on-one stuff, Seen can fill that role. I think he's a great fit for what Brian Flores wants to do on defense. I'm optimistic about Andrew Booth in year two. Again, he was banged up. You got to kind of throw him to the wolves a bit, get his feet in the fire, see if he grows, takes that next step forward. Brian Asamoah, the athletic linebacker. Flores typically likes some more thumpers from that standpoint, but a coverage linebacker is going to fit really well, and he also showed he could blitz at Oklahoma. I think there's a great fit for those three young players, so I'm hopeful take a massive step forward from the very brief glimpses we got overall in 2022. Also, fun fact before we go, and this is awesome here, Brian Flores' daughter took her first steps at U.S. Bank Stadium. So I think that is uh, going to lead to some very fond memories overall for Flores. Hopefully it leads to some even fonder ones in terms of actual on-field play. So before we go, Name a player you are excited to see play under Flores. Could be Andrew Booth. Could be Lewis Seen. Could be Brian Osmond. Could be somebody we didn't mention. Maybe a veteran. Uh, maybe a still young piece that hasn't really broken out quite yet. Could be one of those edge rushers. Maybe one of the young guys. I think they could all thrive under Flores. So head down to the comment section. Let me know a player you are excited to see play under Brian Flores in 2023.